Well, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Sunday, January 30th, the fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time, and it is the feast day of, I'm going to butcher his name, but it's St. Mucian Marie Wio. It's like the A-U-X ending. That's, that's like O, right? Mucian Marie Wio. He was around in the late, well, the yeah, mid to late 1800s, born in 1841, and died in 1917, and he was a Belgian member of the Brothers of Christian Schools, and he spent his entire life as a teacher, and his honored as a saint due to, I couldn't find what he's the patron saint of, maybe it's the Brothers of Christian Schools, but um, evidently shortly after his death, there were many miracles that were attested to him, uh, through him, through his intercession. Um, and then Christianity spread tremendously in that area. He died a natural death. Um, he got sick, but um, it's not like he wasn't a martyr or anything. So I couldn't find it, but there he is. I need to give 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 him some credit because he's a 20th century saint, which is pretty modern, 1917. Anyway, today's gospel is from Luke chapter 4, verses 21 through 30. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we have heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha, the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed but only Naaman, the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, and to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. What a swing of what takes place in today's gospel of his rejection at his hometown in Nazareth. You know, because he, Jesus is in his hometown and like he's preaching and talking to, and speaking to those in the synagogue, the ones that are quote unquote the spiritual leaders. And Jesus is the ones teaching them. But they're very intrigued. They're engaged. And like they're, they're asking Jesus questions for more. Like they, it says, they all spoke highly of him and were amazed at his gracious words that came from his mouth. So we got these people that are filled with amazement and in awe. And then by the at the beginning of this gospel today, but then by the end of it, they want to hurl Jesus down the top of a mountain to kill him. And to what did Jesus do? Nothing. Nothing wrong. He's just preaching the truth. And like the transition took place whenever Jesus challenges them and says, you don't have deep enough faith for me to do any works here. So they heard something that they didn't want to hear, even though Jesus is saying the truth. Now Jesus is challenging them and they're not receptive of it. In fact, instead of being open and receptive to it, they take it personally and they want to attack him, you know acting like children, you know, as grown adults, as grown leaders of the faith. And how much does this happen to us? And so Jesus, you know, it says they were, when the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. So I think it just shows our human nature in this and how easy it is for us to respond and let our emotions get the best of us for both the good and the bad, for better or for worse. Our emotions it's part of our human nature, and it's something that we need to be able to control. And I think that that's what one of the messages that we can take today.
A is are we do we are we like are we living our Christian life the right way, way that we are challenging people to be better and grow closer to Christ? But then secondly, how are we whenever it comes to managing our emotions and controlling our emotions? Because that is a the ability to control our emotions is a tremendous sign of true maturity. And that's something that I think that you and I and all of us could probably do better at. So with all that being said, have a great day. God bless. And living in Cincinnati, I gotta say, go Bengals. You know, it's the city is pretty crazy right now. It's pretty it's it's fun. It's fun. So hopefully the Bengals pull it out. If not, it is what it is. But enjoy watching the game if you watch the Bengals Chiefs game today. So have a great day. God bless. Keep it real. In the Father, Son, and Spirit, Amen.